I'm Griff Robodanger, and this is Grr Ass, where I recap dumb horror movies and talk about the dumb stuff that happens in them. Grr Ass stands for, boom, Griff Robodanger rants about scary stuff, or whatever else I've, I've said a bunch of things. And today's movie is going to be Hospital Massacre, also known as X-Ray. Basically, they wanted to make a slasher movie, but they couldn't decide if they wanted to make a hospital set slasher movie or a Valentine's Day set slasher movie. So they figured, why not make both? And that's what this movie is. It's Hospital Massacre is uh, whatever. It, it, it whatever. Let's just get it. Skeletron to go. Let's just start the movie. It's 1961 and it's Susan's house. This is Susan, that's her friend David, and they love trains, but not as much as they love Valentine's Day apparently. Look at this frickin' place. Who likes Valentine's Day this much? I've never seen this many decorations in a place. They got them everywhere. They got them on the coat rack. They got them on their train set. Hallmark doesn't even like Valentine's Day this much. So this little creep's name is Harold, and he's in love with Susan. He leaves a Valentine on her front doorstep, knocks and runs away, she comes to the door, gets the valentine, goes inside, and... Who's that from? From Harold? Oh my god. Oh. I don't know, Susan. Maybe he heard you liked valentines. <laughs> Harold is pissed. I'm gonna go get some cake. So Susan goes to get cake, and is she going to stab David? Oh, oh no, she just cuts cake like a psychopath. There's a commotion in the other room. Look what my mom made for us. David is impaled on a coat rack? And Harold is in the window laughing. He's not even trying to hide the fact that he did it. How did he do this? Like, he's just this normal sized 10 year old kid. While Susan was away cutting the cake, Harold managed to sneak in, grab David, who apparently didn't put up much of a fight, and impale him on the coat rack and then sneak away? Like, I don't even know how he got him up on that coat rack. I don't know how he had the strength. I don't even know how the physics work on that. And then all you got on the coat rack is David in this hat. Like, I don't even know how he got the weight distribution right without that thing tipping over. I mean, I've sometimes put a heavy coat on a coat rack and it started, whoa! Like, how he got a whole kid up there. Anyway, Susan sees Harold and screams and... Cut to 19 years later, which would be 1980. So this is Susan now. She has a daughter, and she has this ex-husband who's trying to dump the kid off early to Susan. Can't you take her now? No, I can't. I've got to go to the hospital and get my test results. Can't you get anything right? And Susan's new boyfriend, Jack, shows up. He takes her to the hospital. This isn't going to take long, is it? No, it'll just take a couple of minutes. Be right back. So she enters the hospital, but this evil doctor is watching her. Well, could that be Harold? She checks in, and this creepy janitor just leers at her the whole time. He's just openly being a creep, but nobody seems to care. She gets on the elevator and, oh my god, it's a dead guy, and he's dripping blood on her shoe. Alright, hold up. Okay, how did he get that much ketchup on top of his fingers? There's barely any on the burger. Also, how did he drip ketchup on her shoes, when they're like this far apart? So he leaves the elevator. Happy Valentine's Day. Eh, he's drunk as shit. Up in room 907 of the hospital, this evil doctor has this picture hanging up of Susan as a little girl. It's even in like a frame and everything. And he's just stroking this picture. Uh, ew. Meanwhile, adult Susan is still on this elevator. I mean, there's only like 10 floors total in this hospital. I don't know why it takes so long. And the door opens and uh, it's three dudes in gas masks. Wait, is this a My Bloody Valentine reference? You shouldn't be up here, lady. We're fumigating this floor. But the receptionist downstairs said the 8th floor. This is the ninth floor. So before Susan can go down to the 8th floor where she belongs, the evil doctor turns off the power to the elevator, trapping her inside. Meanwhile, this other doctor is in her office, and she has a jar on her desk holding what looks to be like some sort of bloody organ. Dr. Jacobs, please report to the ninth floor. Dr. Jacobs. The ninth floor is the floor that's being fumigated. Wouldn't this doctor that works at this hospital know that? So the doctor tries to use the elevator, but it's been turned off by the killer, so she takes the stairs and goes in and instantly knows the place is being fumigated. She starts to cover her mouth for a second, but not her nose, and then just says screw it and doesn't bother at all. She doesn't seem to think it's weird that she's been called up to a floor filled with toxic air. So Dr. Yolo is clearly uncomfortable and even looks a bit scared. 
She doesn't think for a moment that maybe that dude, I don't know, said the wrong floor name. Like, there's clearly no official hospital shit going on in this floor. And this may be the worst hospital ever, but I still doubt they'd keep patients on a fumigated floor. So she's freaked the hell out even being there, even though this is like her workplace. And she gets scared by a medical skeleton, even though she's a doctor and has probably seen hundreds of these things. And keep in mind, she doesn't realize she's in a horror movie yet. I mean, she sees this thing that maybe looks like a body, and oh my god, suspensefully pulls it back, and oh no, it's just another medical dummy thing. So then the locker starts making these weird hissing noises. So she cautiously approaches it, instead of, I don't know, getting a maintenance guy to check it out. And there's cans of paint in there, I guess? And then the evil doctor pops out and kills her. So Evil Doctor restores power to the elevator because apparently he turned off the power for the specific purpose of killing that one doctor, I guess hoping she didn't do the smart thing and turn around the second she smelled like fumigate smell in the air. Which, I don't know, maybe the Evil Doctor knows he works with a bunch of dumbasses. So Evil Doctor sneaks into the dead doctor's office. Seriously, what the hell is in that jar? He's there to replace Susan's file with an identical file that he has to write her name on. Like, all the other details were already filled in, but he didn't write her name on the front until just now for whatever reason. Susan actually shows up at the door, and Evil Doctor has to hide when she comes in. He does a pretty pathetic job of hiding, but Susan somehow doesn't see him. Anyway, Susan sees the office is clearly empty, so she decides to wait outside the office and smoke a cigarette because this was the early 80s. So cut to the ninth floor again, where creepy perv janitor is carrying medical dummies around, presumably to have sex with them. He doesn't seem to mind the toxic air. He shows up in the room the dead doctor was killed in and tosses the dolls, but he sees blood on the ground, then a bloody sheet. And it's, oh psych, it's a can of red paint that was tipped over next to the dummy from before. Like, honestly, that wasn't there before. Who did that? Anyway, the janitor goes to put the paint away in the locker, but the dead doctor's body is in there. He runs the hell out of there, and he runs into the evil doctor. An evil doctor just power walks away from him, but janitor chases him down. He follows him into this room like literally a second after the doctor enters it, but the doctor has managed to completely hide in this tiny little room. Like, is he a ninja? Is he, is he a wizard with an invisibility cape? Hey look, another valentine heart. And evil doctor sneaks up behind the janitor, somehow, and grabs him and dunks his face into a sink filled with green chemicals that just melts his face away because this was easier than just stabbing him. So we return to Susan, who calls her ex-husband, and she's having another cigarette. And he's being menacing as shit. He's stabbing this orange like it's Susan's divorce attorney. Maybe it's mother. Do you want to talk to her? Not particularly. Holy shit, he's gonna stab his daughter. Nobody holds a knife like that unless they're about to stab someone. Apparently the movie wants to convince us that the ex-husband might be a suspect, even though we know the killer is Harold from the prologue, and I'm pretty sure Susan would have known if she would have married Harold. And if somehow she didn't, I think Harold would have probably murdered mur Harold would have probably murdered her sometime, I don't know, when they were married. It's apparently nighttime already, and Susan's boyfriend is still parked in the loading zone of the hospital? How has he not been towed by now? Susan wanders into this room and just stares at patients. Can I help you? I'm looking for Dr. Jacobs. Have you tried the doctor's lounge? No. Where is it? That way. Oh, thanks for the very specific instruction. And then when she leaves, this doctor creepily plays with his doctor cap. Like, for fuck's sake, movie, does every single character in this have to be a suspect? Susan somehow finds the doctor's lounge and meets this gentleman. What's the matter? You lost? I'm looking for Dr. Jacobs. I saw her on here a moment ago. I'm Harry. Wait, wait, wait. His name is Harry? I mean, they wouldn't be that obvious, right? Didn't I see your name on a checkup result? That's why I'm here. Look, Harry, do you think you could... Get that result for me. Okay, what kind of hospital is this? Susan Jerry, not so fast. But I need an MD to countersign it. Oh, come on. Well, you're a doctor, aren't you? Sorry, just a humble intern coolie. There's bound to be an MD around here someplace, so why don't we go find him? And they leave the... What the fuck is this lady doing? So then we meet Dr. Saxon, who we're supposed to believe is a suspect because he's wearing doctor stuff even though he's a doctor and he works at this hospital. Anyway, Harry shows Dr. Saxon the charts. Will it take long? Shut up, woman. I'm doctoring. 
Dr. Jacobs seen this? I don't know. Why, is there anything wrong? Excuse me a second. So while Susan is waiting, she notices Dr. Saxon has gross pictures hanging in his office of a diseased hand and also some weird surgical pictures. You know, between Dr. Jacobs' weird jar and Dr. Saxon's creepy photos, I shudder to imagine what sort of decorations this hospital's proctologist has in their office. Tom? Mother? Give me a kiss. Now pass me daddy. He went out. Where did he go? Yeah, he said he needed more oranges to murder. You're not there alone, are you? Yes. Don't open the door for anybody, okay? Okay. Miss Jeremy, Dr. Saxon is waiting for you. What is going on here? Seriously, like, is this your second office? We have to run some more tests. But this whole checkup is just a... A what? Uh, what are you going to say, dipshit? A simple formality. You're a simple formality. Dora, Kitty, you may go. Yes, Dr. Yes, Saxon. Now, get undressed. So Dr. Saxon pervs on Susan changing, but Bald Doctor comes in. What the hell happened to Jacobs? I have no idea. I'd like to locate her fast. I'd like an explanation of this. Well, Dr. Saxon, it appears to be a woman undressing. Are you ready? Yes. Would you sit down, please? So Dr. Saxon just instantly removes her gown like the second she sits down, so it won't interfere with such tests as checking her blood pressure or feeling her feet. While this is going on, sloppy drunk Burger Man is back and he peeps through the window because this hospital doesn't care about patient privacy. He's also swigging a bottle of booze. A nurse catches him and... I see you, Hal. What are you doing? Sightseeing. Go back to your ward. Does jack shit. He immediately harasses another female patient, then goes back to peeping through the open curtain that the nurse didn't even bother to fix, even though she knows it has a clear view of a nude patient. I'm pretty sure everybody in this hospital is a sex offender at this point. So they put Susan in this hospital room to wait while her tests are coming back. She's in there with three angry old women. The movie acts like these are her cellmates. We get a nice shot of this orange carcass. So this is where Susan's tests are being done, in this tiny little room with dirty rat cages and active Bunsen burners doing chemistry while this lady types. Let's go grab a cup of coffee. Uh, no, I've got to finish these reports for this Susan Jeremy. But evil doctor shows up and... <laughs> Keep in mind, her office isn't on the ninth floor, it's on a busy, active floor. While she was talking to her friend, six people passed in the background, okay? You mean to tell me that not a single one of them heard this woman screaming and getting shoved around? <laughs> Anybody hearing this? No? No? I'm good? Okay. So Evil Doctor swaps out Susan's test results with his bloody hands. Like seriously, nobody's gonna question why this report has blood all over it? So almost immediately after this happens, Harry shows up in this office, he walks up to this typewriter and just grabs the report without reading the name on it. Now, this is going to be important later for reasons that are probably really obvious. This, this is practically a fucking death warrant. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to keep you here for a while. Is it serious? No. It's nothing. I mean, were you looking forward to Wednesday? Because that might be off the table. You can tell me the truth. Is it serious? Gotcha! You thought you were gonna be okay. You just got sex in. <laughs> Meanwhile, because the evil doctor did such a shitty job of hiding his last victim, she falls out of his closet, so he has to kill this lady too. Wee! And one of these old ladies hates Susan. I wonder what ails her. All her bones are decaying, and her organs are all rancid, and her blood is as malignant as slime. Would you just shut up? What? I was just reading your test results. Susan storms off and runs into Harry, who has an idea. Tell you what, go take a look at Dr. Jacobs' files. Wait, there were more files this whole time? Uh, the drunk burger man shows up again. Harry and Susan sneak into Dr. Jacobs' office and break into her file cabinet, but the door starts to open. Harry and Susan pick the perfect hiding spot. Oh wow, is that evil doctor? Well, that blows my theory that the killer is Harry. Completely invisible. Whew, close call, back to snooping. What? What is it? Don't you worry, baby. I call all of my patients baby. Although, I do usually work in the nursery, so... We'll have you out of here in an hour. 
You just go back to your ward and sit tight. Why are they keeping me here in the first place? Somebody's trying to play a con job on you. <sighs> Look, Susan, here's a good life tip. The moment you're at a hospital and a hospital employee tells you that the hospital is doing a con job on you, you should just go get your shit and leave. Either this hospital employee is a lying sack of shit or somebody else at the hospital is a lying sack of shit, but you don't want to go to a hospital where somebody's a lying sack of shit. There are other hospitals. So we cut back to outside where Jack the boyfriend finally wakes up. He hasn't been towed. He hasn't been ticketed. Also, it's a good time to point out that Susan called her ex-husband twice, but didn't think to once go out and tell her boyfriend who's waiting in the car like, hey, some other shit came up. You might want to get a real parking spot or maybe just come in. I don't know. Who are you looking for? Miss Susan and Jeremy. I've been waiting for two hours. Two hours? That's it? Like, there have been 43 minutes of actual movie since she went into that hospital. When you factor in all the, like, scenes where she's just waiting and where they had to do the results, like, what? Uh, he wants to see Miss Jeremy. Are you a relative? What the hell do you mean? Dude's never heard of relatives? Well, you see, she's under observation. Observation? Well, what does that mean? It means she's under observation. Yeah, you tell him, nurse. Where? Around this corner, 8B. Make it fast. Fast? Well, well, what does that mean? So Jack finally finds Susan. They won't let me go. They said something's wrong. Wrong? Well, what do you mean? Seriously, Jack? Are you a relative? What the hell do you mean? Observation. Well, what does that mean? Wrong? Well, what do you mean? Hey, Susan, maybe buy Jack a dictionary for Valentine's Day, because your man's dumb as shit. Let's get out of here. They try to escape, but nope. Going somewhere? Yes, I'm checking out. Did you forget you're grounded, Susan? I hate you, Dr. Saxon. You're not my real dad. Take Miss Jeremy back to her ward, please. Yes, sir. Come on, yeah, come on. Now, calm down. Jack! Right. Right. So I guess this is how the filmmakers think hospitals work. Jack! Wait a minute. What is this necessary? Necessary? Yeah, yeah I'm afraid so. Why? She's very ill. Can you tell me anything more? Please, we're engaged. It's a bench outside of my office. Why don't you go have a seat? I'll fill you in later. Hold up. Why the hell is Dr. Saxon not telling Susan or Jack any information about her diagnosis? Why is he keeping this a secret? Like, if it turns out he somehow is the killer, he went to all that effort to fake all that evidence to try to prove she's sick so she'll stay. Why not share that information if you went to all that effort? And if he's not the killer, he actually thinks all that shit's real. So, again, why would you not tell them? Why is it a secret? She's a patient in your hospital. So Jack goes to wait. Will the gentleman waiting on the eighth floor please pick up the hall telephone? I'm the only gentleman in the hallway. Are you calling me? Room 911. And on his way up, he runs into Drunk Perv. Jumping Christ! You scared the shit out of me! Of course, the ninth floor is still filled with fumes, which once again doesn't strike Jack as odd or unsafe, even though the shit's so thick you can't even see where you're going. And in the fumigated halls, he runs into the three old ladies from Susan's room. Dr. Jacobs! Dr. Jacobs! Why? Why would this be happening? Please, movie, just give me one reason why Susan's roommates are strolling around on a fumigated floor looking for their doctor. So Jack eventually finds the room he was instructed to go to. Over here. So a creepy voice invites you into a dark room on a fumigated floor in a hospital. And you say, sure. Jack, being the moron he is, decides to check the situation out. He snoops behind the curtain. It's this lady, clearly murdered. Jack is still like, duh. An evil doctor gets him. The evil doctor takes the time to deliver this box to Susan, who wakes up and opens it, and Jack's head is inside. So Susan goes running and screaming around the hospital, and she enters this room where these, these three guys that look like they've all been in, like, serious skiing accidents. Somebody help! Like, what the fuck is going on here? Why are they, like, moving around like this? Why doesn't the middle guy have an actual bed? And why is she scared of these guys? Like, they're not going to do anything to her. They couldn't do anything to her. So Dr. Saxon and his nurses find her because she's been screaming. Somebody cut off his hand! Cut it out! Come on. Okay, so now we're adding assault to Dr. Saxon's charges. 
They force her back to her room. She tries to convince them Jack's head is in the box. Saxon opens the box. The Valentine box no longer contains Jack's head, but instead there's a cake. So apparently this evil doctor planned ahead and had two boxes set aside for this trick, one of them with a cake and another to hold the head of a person he had no idea he was going to have to kill. Like what if Susan took a cab to the hospital? Whose head was going to go in that other box? It was Jack's head! Did they see it? Oh look, the old ladies are back. They weren't here. They weren't here. It was Jack's head! Harry got my medical chart from Dr. Jacob's file. They're photostats of all the doctor's files in the archives upstairs. So now there's a third place with records that nobody's bothered to check? They give her this sedative pill, which she pretends to take. So when they leave, she spits the pill out and sneaks away. But somebody's coming. So she decides to hide behind this curtain where her feet are clearly visible. But in this movie, that's good enough. It's Evil Doctor with an axe. Of course, she drops her lighter. She grabs the lighter with her toe because that lighter on the floor is the thing that's going to reveal her location to the killer who's two feet away and not her toe frantically poking out from behind the curtain. Eh, he eventually gives up the search and leaves, and she heads down the stairs, but runs into a drunk perv who tries to forcibly kiss her. Seriously, if this was real life, could you imagine the number of lawsuits she would have against this hospital by the end of the movie? Susan sneaks into the archives room to watch Dr. Saxon look for the record that will apparently prove she's not sick, but she accidentally knocks a file onto the floor in the least accidental looking way possible. Dr. Saxon scans the room and uh oh, it's Harold. She runs and finds some help, but they think she's nuts and they force her back to a room where they strap her to a bed because you know, that's what hospitals do. Well, they're not covering her mouth. Now what? It's another seizure. I'm not having a seizure. Are these nurses just making shit up as they go along? She said she saw someone kill Dr. Saxon with an ax. They didn't try, killed him. Wait, what? They didn't try, killed him. And he said, said she saw someone kill Dr. Saxon with an axe. There is no try. If there's any more of this, I'm going to have to operate. That's your basis for deciding you need to operate? Not because, I don't know, she actually needs the operation? You're using operation as a punishment for bad behavior? I just saw a murder! You asshole! The old ladies try to go to sleep, even though Susan's screaming her head off. The fact that the hospital just left this screaming restrained woman in their room at least proves that they hate all their patients equally. So this doctor runs into Harold who's running, holding up a sheet. This elicits this reaction. She's so scared I think she sheet her pants. And then he catches her and jabs her with this giant syringe filled with soy sauce. And now she's a ghost? Ball doctor is prepping for the surgery and... So Harold finally goes and gets Susan, and he brings her to the fumigated floor. It's not Harry. It's Harold. Hold up. So this movie that bent over backwards to make us believe the killer might be drunk guy or Dr. Saxon or janitor or ex-husband or old guy or this skeleton just blatantly gives the actual killer a name that's a common form of the name of the kid that you know is the killer from the prologue. That's the big reveal. Oh, that doctor over there? That's not Michael Myers. That's Mikey. Totally different dude. Anyway, Harry's going to kill Susan, but... <coughs> You to check. Oops. The old ladies are back. What the fuck? Why are they down there again? They were in bed, then came upstairs to look for Dr. Jacobs, then went back to bed, then came back again to look for Dr. Jacobs? Seriously? This is the best shit you can come up with? Why wouldn't you use the drunk guy for this scene? You've already established he likes to watch doctors touch Susan creepily. So dumb. So yeah, Susan uses this distraction to stab Harry and escape, and then there's this chase through this room full of bottles. Susan tries to escape by climbing up this ladder that they use to grab things off high shelves. Like, that doesn't seem to actually go anywhere, Susan. But she's caught and throws a flammable bottle in Harry's face. So she escapes to the stairs and runs up to the roof? Susan, you dumbass. She thumps him and there's this struggle. Hey, look, the lighter she's conveniently had on her the whole time, even when she was physically restrained by the hospital staff. Good thing they let her keep that. She lights Harry's flammable face. Seems like a bad idea to light a dude on fire while he's on top of you, but... Susan's got a Susan, and a flaming hairy shaped dummy falls off of the hospital roof. And 
it's the next morning. Susan is calmly leaving the hospital. Wait, the hospital was no smoking this whole time? She must have smoked a carton while she was in there. She was lighting up everywhere. No wonder they all hated her. Now I wonder if all those old ladies were in for, like, lung complications and this asshole Susan is just chain-smoking in their room against the rules. And hey, look, it's her daughter. Yeah, why not bring her to the creepy hellhole crime scene where they're probably still hauling out bodies from the night before instead of, I don't know, meeting up with her literally anywhere else. And that's the end of the movie. Okay, so let's talk about Harold. As a kid, he does this. And Susan knows he did it, knows who he is, because he's either a neighbor or a classmate, so he should be really easy to track down. You would think he would be like Michael Myers and locked up in a sanitarium to this day, but apparently he's now working at a hospital? <sighs> Look, I am all for rehabilitation, but when you impale a kid on a coat rack, I think maybe you should never be allowed to be a doctor. Like, how did he even get into medical school? Do you know how many people a year don't get into medical school who didn't murder a kid with a coat rack? So how about when Harry killed that lab lady and swapped out the report in the typewriter, then in literally the next scene, Harry shows up to retrieve that same report he just put in the typewriter. Why even swap them out if you're the one that's gonna go grab the damn thing? How about when Harry and Susan are hiding from what we're supposed to believe is Evil Doctor? Who the hell is this guy? Why does he look exactly like Evil Doctor? So Harry's plan makes no frickin' sense. Kill a bunch of people so you can fake records so the hospital will force Susan to stay, but then try to convince Susan the hospital is out to get her so she doesn't want to stay, and then kill more people to make Susan look crazy so they restrain her, then take Susan up to the ninth floor to kill her. What a stupid frickin' plan! There were several points where Harry could have easily convinced Susan to go up to the ninth floor for whatever bullshit reason. He could have convinced her to go up to the ninth floor and said, oh, there's some secret archives of Dr. Jacobs up there, you need to come with me. And then he could have lured her to his killing room, and then he could have just killed her, and then he would have saved himself a lot of effort, and probably wouldn't have had to murder half of his workmates. He could have probably went back to work the next day. He was alone with her so many times. Hell, you could probably club her over the head and carry her over your shoulder up to the ninth floor. I doubt anyone in this hospital would give the slightest shit, but instead he does this convoluted bullshit like none of this makes any sense Like why would you go to all this effort and when did he plan this all out? Like did he know Susan was coming in that day? Like or did he just see her through the window and say oh, yeah, you know what that 30 something year old lady with the black hair That's totally the little blonde girl. I'm infatuated with which uh, I mean and if he did know it was her like that doctor's report has her home address. Why didn't he just go to her house and kill her before she comes back for her appointment? So this is a movie that goes out of its way to convince you everybody is the killer, except for the guy who really is the killer. Except they give him a really obvious name that's almost exactly like the name of the person you know is the killer. Like this guy didn't change his name or doesn't go by like his middle name or something. No, they just call him Harry. Like he doesn't even bother to change his name around Susan. It's a ridiculous movie. It's a ridiculous hospital. Everything in this movie is designed to fake scare you and the stuff that's actually supposed to scare you isn't really that scary anyway that was hospital massacre it's ridiculous but it's kind of stupidly entertaining but it's really stupid this was grr ass and if you enjoyed this one go check out my channel go ahead check it now and if you like what you see subscribe so you can see more stuff like this and until next time later danger seekers